Hey, what's good? How y'all doing out there? I'm back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, having myself a dizzle of a day. Um, don't forget that this podcast gets uploaded to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Rumble. And then we'll take the uh, video and stream it live on three of the Twitter accounts. Since Twitter doesn't let me upload a video of this size directly to Twitter. So it will stream live on Twitter at Paul P Podcast, Twitter at Paul W Pickett, and Twitter at Indie Castle or Urban Obsession. Definitely follow on Rumble because the videos are monetized already on Rumble. Unlike YouTube, which requires thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. Also, don't forget the audio version of my podcast goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and much much more definitely follow me on all those platforms as well um this is the first episode before game since game six of the nba finals i didn't really do my wrap up and before i do my wrap up let's get into a word from one of our sponsors Cause me and my team will never be link up They're gonna be drink up We sit down and relax and have few classes When there's things to think about Like I'm nice with the bars When I tend to the bars And I'm not talking drink ups So tell the bartender that's tend to the bar to Please pass me a big cup up And tell that waitress just waiting on us To put a little ice in it Now watch the ice become weightless Like the spaceships that I be sitting in Now wait and listen Look, they're waiting for that tropical twist That'll take a good taste bud Now taste up uh, Now I insist it's the Dizzle. That's right. I insist it's the Dizzle, Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur. Make sure of agave te- tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Check them out. Dizzlebrand.com. Go to all locations, and you'll see every state, city, store that Dizzle's located in. If it's not located in your state or your store, which is Right now, California, Kansas, and Oklahoma City, or Oklahoma, if I'm not mistaken. You can order your very own bottle or bottles online. Go to our locations on dizzlebrand.com. Click one of the top three website links. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Also, you can get the Dizzle Brand merch. They got the hats, got the t shirts. Dizzle Brand established 2001. Check them out, dizzlebrand.com. Um, first, congratulations to the Golden State Warriors. When, uh, even though it wasn't very exciting of eight, eight finals at all, it just really wasn't. Um, like, compared to pre pandemic numbers, like, if you compare the numbers of Golden versus the Raptors to this game, I mean, you're talking about 8 million less viewers. It's a lot. That's a lot. 8 million less viewers. Um, congratulations to Andrew Wiggins. Um, only thing left for him really to do is probably try to get an all-star now. Get an all-star selection. I mean, he's never been selected to an all-star game. But he put up 18 in game six. With three blocks, four steals, five or six, six rebounds. I mean, he did his thing. 12 from Draymond along with 12 rebounds, eight assists, two steals, two blocks. He did his thing. Clay Thompson gave you 12 with two steals, two assists, five rebounds. You got 34 from Curry with one block, two steals, seven assists, seven rebounds. And Jordan Poole gave you 15 off the bench. Um, Warriors, I mean, Warriors ain't got to do nothing next year. They ain't got to make no moves. You still got a young Wiggins. Um, they had Otto Porter actually starting at um, Power Forward and Draymond at center on this on that game six. Um, they could use a better center, but they got Wiseman still. Got to see what Wiseman can do. They got Jonathan Kaminga, who's still young. Jordan Poole's young. Gary Payton, the second's young. Um, Moses Moody, Juan Toscato, and I mean, they're good to go. They just need to develop their young guys. They need Wiseman to come back and get healthy. 
Um, Clay, definitely, you know, it would help for Clay to um, get a little better coming in the next season. If he doesn't improve from none of how he played this season, I'm thinking you got to move um, Jordan Poole to that starting two-guard position and move um, – Clay on the bench, man. You got Clay Meyer to go to the bench. All right, let's go to the Boston Celtics. <laughs> Jason Tatum gave you 13 points, um, seven assists, three steals, a block, 19 out of Horford, along with 14 rebounds. He did his thing in game six. He was the only plus, him and Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown put up 34, seven, three. Marcus Martin didn't give you much of nothing. That was pretty much it. Um, what's my takeaway? Jalen Brown has more of that dog in him than Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum might be a little more skilled, but if you ain't got that dog in you, um, I don't know, man. This is going to be like – I'm thinking uh, the Celtics need a better facilitator than Marcus Smart. Better, but they do need a better facilitator than Marcus Smart. I don't know who they're gonna get. Who's out there that's a good facilitator? They don't. It don't gotta be like a Chris Paul facilitator. I'm thinking somebody like a like a Mike Conley. Mike, they need somebody like Mike Conley. Mike Conley, Mike Conley, definitely. A guy who is more of a facilitator and have Marcus Smart coming off the bench because he's more of a defensive guy anyways. Um, Jason Tatum needs to work on his confidence. I don't like some of the remarks he made. Like he, he publicly displayed doubt in himself. You know, you don't want your your number one guy on any pro sports team displaying public doubt. Do that privately, you know. Do that privately. We got the draft. So we got the draft coming up. Um, right now, the top three are pretty much evident, as they're saying. With Chet Paolo Banchero and um, Jabari Smith. I'm a little nervous, like for my Hornets right now. Also, um, there was news I seen where Montrez Harrell got busted with three pounds of marijuana in Kentucky, which probably now and and if I'm not mistaken, Montrez Harrell played. Um, college for Louisville. Let me make sure. So he's probably from there. Yeah, he did play for you. Yeah, Louisville. So he's Kentucky. That's you know that's his stomping ground. So I don't know if it's like a trafficking charge, like crossing straight borders or whatnot. I still got to ask myself, why the hell does a pro athlete? need to be riding around with three pounds of marijuana. I mean, you can't pay some one of your homeboys to take that risk for you. Um, Charlotte Hornets are probably going to cut him. NBA will probably suspend him. It doesn't look good for Charlotte. Now that we lost, we're going to lose our best bench player probably. And, you know, we don't got – we got 14th or 5th pick so you know it's not really looking good for us and I don't know much about most of these players to really analyze really who they are I just know the Kings kicks Kings pick supposed to be very important and they I think they got the Kings taking another guard I mean they literally taking a guard in the last three drafts, I mean, they took Halliburton, traded him. 
They took Davion Mitchell last year. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. I know um, a lot of people saying Jabari Smith's going number one. I wouldn't be surprised if Chet Hogan goes number one because of his affiliation with Jalen Suggs. A lot of times, a lot of teams want to bring in that kind of chemistry and stuff like that, you know, and whatnot. But um, the draft is coming up in a few days. I wish – I'm hoping my Charlotte Hornets can – Maybe package something together, go to Haywood in a pick and move up. I just don't know that we're going to get much out of this draft at all. And for OKC, for Houston, I think those two teams are kind of in a position to be moving forward real, real good. But, like, Orlando's still, like, I mean – they still need to have an all uh, all star first before we talk about Orlando being anything like winning anything. Like Houston, if Houston gets any one of the top three and puts them with Jalen Jalen Green, that that's gonna be good. And then OKC, if they get any one of the top three and puts them with Josh Giddy and Shea Gillius Alexander and Lou Lou D- Dort, I mean. That looks like they're going to be moving in the right direction, especially if all the top three pan out. But if I had to, if I had to pick who – I know people probably – you got Paolo, Chet, and Jabari. If I had to pick who I think would probably be more likely to not pan out for a top three pick, I'm going to go with the Jabari Smith cap. I'm going Jabari Smith cat. I don't know because Paolo, I think just his body and everything, I think he's going to be good to go. I think Duke underused him. He's going to be good to go. Um, Chet Holmgren, I think, is going to be a difference maker. I really do. I really do because he plays both ends of the floor. And I just think he's going to be a difference maker. So, yeah, excited. Draft is – June 23rd, that's in three days. So that's what? That's this Thursday. This Thursday. And I definitely might go live just for the top three picks just to see what's going on. Okay, what do we got here? Um, I want to talk about this. Mayra Flores. And before I do that, let's give you a word from one of our sponsors. Are you a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's where I get marketed promotion from promopalace.biz. Pretty much a one-stop shop for everything. Um, let's get into this Myra Flores she basically won the uh, Texas U.S. House Special District 34. Now, why is this important? Why am I talking about this when I normally don't talk about things like this? Because this is a, a seat that was flipped in, in the last hundred years has been Democrat. So the last hundred years, I mean, you talk about my lifetime, two of my lifetimes and some. It's been Democrat for 100 years, and it's been flipped. Well, do I think it was flipped because of anything that Myra Flores did or the Republicans did? No, because I think it's of everything that Democrats didn't do and how terrible, fucked up job they've done. Um, This is the thing. 
you got your far right, you know, you got your Republicans. I mean, it it's crazy. I mean, no, let's start. You got middle, you know, you got right, you got far right, you know, you got your left, your far left. Um, I guess even in the middle, you could say libertarians are somewhat in the middle. Um, liberals are really kind of like on the left, and then these new age Democrats that are the far left ones, I mean, they're just really out there. When I compare the far right to the far left, the far left is just really, really out there. They're just really batshit crazy more than anybody. They living in this fairy tale world. They're watching too many Disney movies. Um, any, any of these ideologies that they spew out of their mouths, they never really think about solutions or consequences of any of these things. Um, and, you know, they're just willing to open up a rabbit's hole at the rabbit's hole in some of these things and don't really think about the consequences of opening up these rabbit holes. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've opened up so many Pandora's boxes in the last few years to me. So I don't really think, like, the fact that this 100-year-old Democrat seat is flipped to Republican for the first time in 100 years, I don't think it's nothing that Mayra, Mayra Flores necessarily did. And she's a beautiful woman. Who knows? She might be a good politician for a district. But um, I think it's everything. It's all about what Democrats have done and haven't done. I think they've just fucked up and screwed up so bad that... People have no choice, you know, and that's what politics is becoming now. You know, it's like the, all the people that voted against Trump, they just, there was people that just voted against Trump because they hated Trump, but they didn't necessarily like Biden. But you're still guilty for putting in a shit president, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is just more about what the, how fucked up the Democrats are opposed to like the Republicans are just doing all the right things. It's not that's not what's going on here. It's not that Republicans are doing all the right things. It's they're not spewing some shit that's just batshit crazy. You know? And I think this is very significant. You're gonna see a lot of this um Democrats are gonna be bitching and complaining when they lose all these seats, but they're not gonna be looking in the mirror. I mean they literally Democrats, and I try to tell my friend this, Democrats have literally took a stance that all Republicans are racist. Well, once you do that, you've alienated half of the voting fan base. It's like a business taking a political stance, you know? Like you've alienated half your consumer base, you know? And calling a whole party, a whole political party, I mean, a people, you call a half of America racist. I mean, that's not going to bow well. And you can't, you can't backtrack that. You can't retract that. You've done took that stance and put that statement out there. And I'm not a Republican, but I'm not a Democrat. So as far as I'm concerned, they called me a racist too. So I would never ever vote Democrat in my ever in my life again. Ever. I voted once for Barack Obama. I got swindled out of my vote. Never ever again will I vote Democrat. Not saying I'm necessarily going to vote Republican, but I will never vote for a political party that's called half half of America racist. And they have no facts or evidence to apply to that. They don't know every single Republican personally. So there's that. And then it's mathematically impossible for every single one of them to be racist. There's just so many differences between even people in political parties. I mean, every Democrat doesn't think like AOC and Joy Reid, but those that are loud as voices, those are the ones you hear the most and are batshit crazy. And these other Democratic voices ain't speaking up loud enough against those. And same thing with the people on the far right. You know, you got to have Republicans within the party speaking up against those people. And I couldn't even really tell you what the far right's 
view really is because it does it, it once again the far left is the ones that are just louder than everybody living in the fairy tale fantasy lands is these utopia ideas and ideologies and views you know like you know equality it's it's in it's an idea like my friend mr jones said but it's also an illusion like i said i mean we're not technically all created equal you know from a from a mental standpoint yes we all have the mental um capacity to learn all the same things and, and achieve all the same mental things you know if we're talking about things that achieved mentally you know, and even that, that might be stretching it. There's probably, we're probably not all created equal because if we were, we'd probably be a lot more geniuses. And it, there's only so many geniuses in the world. So we're probably not even all created equally on that aspect. Um, then from the physical standpoint, we're definitely not all created equal. Because if we were, we'd be able to all achieve the same athletic achievements, you know, and Muggsy Bogues was never going to be able to achieve all the same things that a Michael Jordan could achieve. When Muggsy Bogues is, yes, he's super athletic for a guy that was my height. But, you know, a guy under six foot is never, um, if I'm not mistaken, led a NBA team to a championship like that. So there's that. You know, it's it's a it's it's a game of giants, man. You know, yes, he he achieved what probably no other five foot four man could ever achieve, but he's probably only gonna be the only one to ever achieve that. I think Earl Boykins might have been the only other one. You know, talk about two guys. You know, out of the millions and millions of five foot four guys, man, if we were all created equal. I'd be you know, have the physical stature of a LeBron James or Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, but I don't have that stature. I'm not as tall as them, you know. My arms ain't as long. My legs ain't as long, you know. And that's that. I mean, I think this idea of equality is an illusion. I don't think we're all created equal. That's a biblical phrase, but that's not true. You know, it's not true. We're not all created equal. Do we have the mental capabilities of achieving the same things mentally? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sh sure we can. But you also got to take an account of ambition and, and determination. You know, those are part of equality too. Because you, if you don't have the same ambition or determination as the next man, then I don't know that. Y'all are so totally equal. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that you, you got to take into account. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things you got to take into account. You can't just say, ah, we're, we're born, we're all created equal. No, it doesn't really just work that way. You know? It just doesn't work that way. Like I said, I would be Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. And why am I saying that? Because those guys are superior over me when it comes to athletic ability, physical stature, you know. Now, if it comes to, like, advertising or something like that, I might have – they might have they, – actually, those guys got me beat too, you know. I might I might know more computer stuff than them. That's about it. I might know more computer stuff than them. And, and anybody can – we can all acquire the same – computer knowledge and stuff. It's all about, you know, Googling and just learn as you go and whatnot. But um, Democrats screwed up. They, I'm, they screwed up and they're going to lose all their power. Uh, I want to get into this last thing I've seen. Kamala Harris was saying that abortion, um, abortion rights and all that, that it doesn't, your decision on it should, doesn't affect your morals or religious beliefs or anything like that. Well, 
I'm not a religious person at all, but I'm going to be the first to tell you that's complete lies and horseshit and bullshit. Because based on most religious beliefs, uh, it you are compromising your morals, you know, when it comes to pro-abortion. And this is the problem I have with pro-abortion. They're usually the most hypocritical people on the planet because they're the same people that try to, if you ask them, well, what about the vaccines? Is it my body, my choice then? Well, they're the same ones that say, well, that's different. It doesn't matter. That's not important. Bullshit. It's all the same. And, you know, you know, a problem I got with pro-abortion people is pro-abortion people are dishonest human beings. Why are they dishonest human beings? Because what are they trying to do? They're trying to hide and conceal the fact that they are pregnant and get rid of a kid without telling the man. What about his choice? That's the thing. That's where they always come up with this hypocritical nonsense and horse shit. Because they always put in my body, my choice. Like this is some pro-choice argument. Well, guess what? You can't be pro-abortion and pro-choice. You either pro-choice and that's it. Because if you're pro-abortion and you're against pro-choice, you're a freaking hypocrite. Because they're the same people that probably say, lock somebody up for drug use. Well, guess what? That's their choice. It's their body, their choice. You know? And y'all want to just throw my body, my choice. But what about my choice? What about just my choice? What about my semen, my choice? My sperm, my choice? You know, like, what if, what if I get to put a, um, like a, some kind of copyright on my semen and sperm when you can't kill it or you can't destroy it? Or, you know, what about that? I put some law on, on my semen and sperm. You, It's my semen, my sperm. So no matter where I shoot it, you won't get to just do what you want to with it because it's my semen, my choice. I mean, like, these are some slippery slopes, man. It's why I be talking about Pandora's boxes being opened by these Democrats, these rabbit holes that they open, you know, because when you throw my body, my choice out there for one thing, any one thing in society – then you have to apply that across the board. And you don't get to just say my body, my choice, because I, I can have choices for other things that don't relate to my body. You know, what if, there, what if there's choices that don't relate to my body? Do I still get a choice in that matter? What about something that came from my body? Do I get a choice in a matter of something that came from my body? Is that still my body, my choice when it's my DNA? Is my DNA, my body, my choice? I mean, these are slippery slopes, man. You know, it's easy for people to just say, yeah, you know, my body, my choice. I should be allowed to go behind the guy's back that I had sex with and got pregnant by and lie to him and not tell him that I'm pregnant and kill off this um, potential life. It, it might not be, I mean, because at what point do we decide when it's a life? And what point do the laws of nature decide when it's a life? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the laws of nature are the ones that decide and determine whether it's a life. Now, so what, whatever point the laws of nature decide it's a life, you know, I, of course, mankind is always going to have a different point than that, but, you know, so, yeah, like, this is, I I don't trust nobody who's pro-abortion, because all you're doing is lying to a man and hiding this, concealing the fact that you were pregnant with his kid, and now there can't be any trust in a relationship whatsoever. And that's why I think I'm going to title this one, Pro-Abortion People Cannot Be Trusted. 
just for the simple, because that's my whole take on this. When I really think about it, pro-abortion people cannot be trusted. They're dishonest human beings that think it's okay to lie to a man and not let him know that you are pregnant with his kid and take away any choice that he has, you know what I'm saying, and still think that y'all's relationship should still be hunky-dory because you're a lying, backstabbing, two-faced bitch. I mean, and we, if you don't even, if you take away the man's choice and you just go get an abortion, then you are a dishonest, lying, two faced, backstabbing bitch. You can't be trusted by nobody on this earth. Why would I trust anybody who's pro abortion, who thinks it's okay to just go in a relationship, even if it's not a, they're not in a relationship, you think it's just okay to just do that and then still, Come into, come into a man's face and just talk to him like it's okay. Like everything is just hunky-dory peaches and cream. No. You know, if this was the caveman days, you'd get your teeth knocked out. You know, but of course this is the, the bitch-ass mankind law days. You know, because I go laws of nature as far as what I agree with. Do I follow the laws of man? Because the consequences, yeah. But do I agree with the laws of man? Not compared to the laws of nature. But yeah, this is some dishonest, two-faced, backstabbing, bitch shit. Pro-abortion people. And then they're, they're always hypocrites because they're the same ones that trying to tell you, force you to get vaccinated. You know, like it's my responsibility to to um, make sure a pro-abortion, backstabbing, lying, two-faced bitch doesn't get COVID. I mean, what, what the hell? What kind of world are we living in where that, that's how it works? That I'm supposed to be responsible for somebody getting COVID that's a lying, backstabbing, two-faced bitch? Nah, screw pro-abortion people. Because that's what they are. When you totally not, don't even tell a man. I can understand rape. I'm always going to say rape. Okay, that's one thing. Rape is one thing. Incest, rape. And, and oh, incest should be going. I mean, incest is about going around forever anyways. That's not even really the same as rape. You know, incest was consensual. They didn't necessarily. It wasn't rape. So, but rape, yeah, it's got to be a hard thing to raise a rapist child. It's got to be a hard thing. But all these women out here just getting abortions, they just walk right back in the man's face like it's all hunky-dory peaches and cream. None of them bitches can be trusted. They're just honest scumbags of human beings. The relationship, I mean, the relationship is, is over really from that point. Cause you, I mean, you can't be trusted. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust a pro-abortion person as far as I could throw. Cause you, I mean, just like I said, you think it's okay to just lie behind people's backs and conceal secrets and, you know, like things like that could come out later and destroy a man. You know, it could destroy a man. I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be upfront and honest, man. Just, I just. Joe Rogan said it best. It's not good to not be honest. I got no respect for no dishonest people whatsoever. And if you're a dishonest scumbag in society, uh, screw you and your mask mandates and you want to force me to get a vaccine. I give a rat's ass what happens to dishonest people. I don't. I'm sorry. Call it. Call me a scumbag, but I don't care about dishonest people whatsoever. I care about honest people. If I don't know you and you're you're an honest human being, hey, I care about you. But I cannot care about dishonest human beings. That's not the way this shit works. That's a made-up religious biblical bullshit. As much as I watch a lot of people like Ben Shapiro and 
Officer Tatum and Whitlock, I disagree with their religious analogies and takes. I don't believe in Jesus. There's no proof in facts. I don't think anybody really has any hard evidence of who or what created us. And once you bring the evidence forth, then I'm willing to accept it if it's factual evidence. But the Holy Bible, the Quran, the any of these books, they're not, they're just they're just stories of how man should live a moral life. And I do agree with things like kindness. You know, I don't I'm not intentionally mean to people when I'm out and about, you know, but I'm still don't give a shit about dishonest people. And once I find out you're dishonest, then don't expect me to care about you. <laughs> After that point, you know, and, and once you're just, once you're just completely dishonest, you just lie to, you know, twice to my face. There is no making up for that shit. There's no taking those lies back. That's two strikes. You don't get the third, you know. So, I mean, honest people, I even, y'all good to go in my book. Two thumbs up, you know, just honest. And that's the thing. Most people who live honest, they, they just, they live, you know, the right moral kind of life. They don't fuck with people. They don't rob them. They don't steal them from them. They don't judge them. They don't, they don't bother them one bit. You know what I'm saying? They just go on living their life while the other person lives theirs. But dishonest people, those are usually the people that are steal from you, rob you at gunpoint, break in your house, Person that's more likely to kill you, rapists, child molesters, all those kind of things. Anything you can think of the criminal element brings dishonest people. They're all dishonest. All criminals are dishonest. And most dishonest people are criminals. I'm sorry. That's facts. People that constantly steal, I mean, lie over and over again. They'll steal from anybody. They'll steal from anybody, man. I, I just don't see any reason for people to be lying unless you're criminals. And I don't have to need a Bible to tell me that. I don't need a Quran to tell me that, you know. Yes, I agree with religion. You should be nice. Thou should not kill, steal, all those things. But I don't believe in religion as far as what created us. In anything of that nature. And I don't think we should need religion in place to know that it's common knowledge to just not just rob and steal from somebody for no reason. You know? I mean, if, if you don't rob, like, the laws of nature only says you go rob and steal when it depend your life depends on it. And you can only kill when your life depends on it. Which normally means somebody's trying to kill you or you're going to starve to death. Those are the main two things where your life depends on it. The laws of nature. And so there's that. But, uh, yeah, these pro-abortion people, they can't be trusted. You know? Because they're typically not pro-choice the, they, they say my body, my choice for one thing. They're, they're just like the people who, the feminists who want only equality in the workplace, some places. They don't want it as bricklayers or garbage men or landscaping jobs. They don't want a quality workplace and all the hard physical labor jobs. They only want a quality workplace in the easy jobs. Well, that's not how it works. It's either across the board or none at all. And that's how this my body, my choice works. It's either across the board or none at all. And y'all don't want to go across the board because y'all want to force people to get vaccinated. Y'all want to force people to stay in their house during COVID lockdowns. Y'all want to force people to wear masks 
that doesn't sound like my body, my choice to me. That sounds like American dictator, no choice. That's what it sounded like during COVID. And, and you know what I didn't think about is we literally took the policies of a dictatorship country and applied them. Just because the vaccine might have came out of a lab in Wuhan, China, doesn't mean we have to apply the same tactics as a dictatorship to get past the situation. Just because it the leak might have came from a dictatorship doesn't mean we have to follow the lead of a dictatorship. And that's what we pretty much did. So why would we follow the lead of a dictatorship unless we are trying to be a dictatorship? That's all I can think of. I can't think of any other common sense, common sense reason of why we would follow the lead of a dictatorship unless we are trying to be a dictatorship. So, yeah, don't trust pro- pro-abortion people. They'll go, go behind your back, won't tell you that they're pregnant, bort the baby off, come back, smile on your face like it's peaches and cream, everything's hunky-dory. Some dishonest, two-faced, lying, scumbag shit right there. These bitches is some two-faced ass bitches doing shit like that. Don't even give a man any kind of option or don't even be honest with him up front. Let's just lie about this shit. Pro-abortion. Pro-liars. Pro-abortion. Pro-liars. That's what that means. Pro-abortion. Pro-liars. That's what they're screaming. Pro-abortion. Pro-liars. Pro-abortion. Pro-liars. No, man. I don't. Pro-liars? No. Pro-scumbags is what that is. So, yeah, that's my take on this whole abortion thing. I mean, I'm not a religious guy, but Kamala, I'm not an idiot and a jackass either. That was complete horse shit. Anybody who is religious is definitely going to um, make you compromise your morals and your religion by being pro-abortion. Because not only you're pro-abortion, you're a pro-liar. There's that. And religion isn't about lying. Religion is about honest being honest, you know? So, yeah, pro-abortion, pro-liars. There's that. So... Once again, I'll thank you for tuning in. We're going to end off with a commercial. This is your boy, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Please check me out three to four days a week on my video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. And check out the audio version on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Peace. See you there. Once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. This is episode 157. A few more, we'll hit that 200 mark. Peace, and I'm out.